guys, it's Mara. Um, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about my career and my job and how I got it, I guess. So first of all, I am a medical laboratory scientist. Um, we, the name used to be called or also known as um, a medical technologist. And for a few years, they were going to change the name to clinical laboratory scientist. So there's not a whole lot of difference. Um, but I kind of want to talk about what my job entails, and it can entail in um, other people's jobs. So, first of all, a medical technologist, a uh, medical laboratory scientist, um, is a person who normally um, has had a college degree and a four-year degree, um, either in a biological science like biology or chemistry or some programs have actual uh, or some colleges actually have a med tech program. Um, so one way is to go to college for four years and then once you graduate and figure out what you want to do or that was part of your plan, um, then your fifth year, then you go to a medical technology um, school or program that's normally through a hospital. So um, a shorter route than that, if you know this is what you want to do when you started school or your second year, maybe you are a sophomore, um, there is a three plus one program with a lot of schools where you do three years of college and then your fourth year is actually your clinical or which was my fifth year. So I went to college, I got my degree in microbiology, um, biology, microbiology, and I had the courses necessary to get into the program. So my right before my senior year, I figured out this is kind of what I wanted to do. So um, some of the courses you have to have, you know, so many hours of biology and chemistry, but you have to have um, immunology in a lot of programs and a few other like higher up math classes because they think those are necessary for the program. So anyway, um, I got into the program uh, Christmas, around Christmas time, um, and then I was to start in June for that next year. Um, so they kind of do the program I went into. They do interviews about six months ahead of time, ahead of time because they rotate in a group of students um, six months at a time. So you're there for a whole year, some like 11 months, 12 months, um, but then you're with a new group every six months. So you're with two different groups, your whole, your whole 11, 12 month span. <coughs> so, um, a lot of people, they don't really know about their career. It's not super well advertised. There are programs over the nation, across the nation, um, but there are fewer and fewer than there used to be. There used to be a lot of schools that you could go to. Um, in Missouri, there are one or two in St. Louis. There's one in Cape, where I'm from. Um, there's one in Kansas City, um, the one in Springfield that I went to. And then there was one in Joplin, and they're starting that program back up after the whole Joplin tornado deal. Um, there could be another one or two that I'm not sure about, but those are the ones I know for a fact. Um, another thing is the cost. So besides the cost of college, um, your clinical year can be very expensive depending on what program you pick. So I went to a hospital where it was cheaper because I like cheap stuff, obviously. <laughs> and my nose is running again. Um... But they, their program was, I think, how much was it? 3500 which is very reasonable. Um, I think it's part subsidized, sub subsidized by the hospital. Um, where in my hometown, there was a program through the local hospital, but most, it was more through the, their college of nursing, which that program for, to become a nurse is very expensive. So they charged about as much, um, for the year as, you know, it was like 
$15,000, something crazy. And I was like, I don't want to pay that, you know. And you can, a lot of the programs, if you say you'll stay on and accept a position, then you can pay off so much a year. But I wasn't sure where I was going to end up, so I didn't want to uh, pick a place solely on banking on that I was going to pay that money back or not just have to pay it up front. So, um... Another question people may have is where can you work? So I work at a hospital. I've worked at in the same hospital system, um, but in different locations. Um, so you can work at a hospital. I know some med techs um, that they travel around different hospitals. They're traveling tech, just like you can be a traveling nurse. Um, so you can work in Hawaii or wherever. Um, also like, um, reference laboratories, um, like if you've heard of Quest or LabCorp, um, they hire med techs and, you know, I guess also you could get a job at, um, like a research laboratory, but most of the time those people have like masters or bachelor of masters in like chemistry or biology. So it's more healthcare field is where the med techs are. Um, where else? So, let's see. What else should I talk about? Um, so what do I do? Um, that changes a lot on location also. So, um, I'm in a very small hospital right now. Um, I run, I work by myself for the most part. Um, and pretty much run everything in the lab. Um, and lately I've had to do all the phlebotomy also. So that means, um, going and having to actually draw the blood from the patient. Um, a lot of larger hospitals, you will have your med techs or your medical laboratory scientists. Um, you will have bench techs and those are usually people who have a bachelor's degree in science, but not, um, they don't have a med tech degree or they didn't do their clinical year and they they just have a bachelor's in biology and don't really know what they want to do. Um, and so the, a lot of them just work until they, you know, or they're on their way to med school or, you know, it's just kind of a, 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 a semi good paying job for just having a bachelor's if you can't find anything else <laughs> pretty much. So um, there's also MLTs, and they are like med techs, but they have a two-year degree. Um, a lot of local colleges will have that program where it's kind of like you're learning um, your science courses and doing your clinicals like at the same time, um, or then going to your clinicals, uh, ro different rotations that they have. Where mine was all one year, and it was all at one hospital. We didn't go to like different hospitals. Um, what else? There are, so there's bench techs, um, then the phlebotomists, um, those are the people that draw the blood, um, at our sister hospital, our main hospital, um, they have phlebotomists and processors, so processors, um, the only difference between, like, a processor and a bench tech are processors don't have a bachelor's. Um, and, but they get paid a teensy bit more than a phlebotomist. They're the ones where all the blood work comes in and they deal with it and sort it, um, from the clinics and get it to the departments they need to go to. And then the phlebotomist, of course, draw the blood. So what do I do? Like I said, um, I draw the blood and I run the blood and, um, I do outpatients and people that come in through the ER, and then we have inpatients as well. So I pretty much get the whole span of any <laughs> anybody who comes to the hospital that needs blood, I'll come in contact with them. Um, so the pay. The pay really depends on where you are. Um, MLTs get paid less than med techs at most hospitals. Sometimes they're on like the same pay scale. It just depends on um, basically how long you've been in that position. Um, but med techs on the lower end of the range is about ooh, 15, 16 dollars. Um, of course, places like California, um, they're like 35. Even in bigger cities, you can get around 25, 30. Um, it really depends. Some is based on cost of living and some is just based on how much the hospitals around them are paying. 
and if they can pay the least amount, then they will, of course. Um, oh, and another thing is, um, Missouri, sorry, I'm just running. Missouri, you do not have to have a state license. Um, you have to be licensed through accredited, accredited program. So I am ASCP certified, which is a uh, so But um, there's also an AMT certification. Um, that some hospitals accept and some don't. Um, but for as a state, we don't also have to have uh, pass a state test where places like Florida and California and New York and a bunch of other random states, you also have to have a state certification. So if you move to another state, then you might have to get recertified basically or have two certifications. Um, the shifts. So I right now I work a 12 hour shift. I work 6 a.m. or well, 5:30 a.m. to uh, 6 p.m. and with your lunch, you know, so then it's like 30 minute lunch. So then it ends up being 12 hours. Um, there are other people that I know that work uh, for tens. Um, I used to work five eights, and when I worked the evening shift, I worked 3:30 or 3 to 11:30 at night. So there's all kind of different shifts. Right now, I work three twelves, which is a little less than, you know, the 40 hours a week, but, um, eh, it's okay. Um, there's also, some places do shift differentials, which I think it was like 225 from evening shift compared to days, and then there's like another dollar or so for overnight shift. Um, a lot of other hospitals, I know they pay even more, like $5.00. Um, for if you work the overnight shift. So it really depends on location, hospital, what kind of good deals you can get. Um, let's see. So the job outlook, I made a list so I remember what to talk about. Um, job outlook is really pretty good. There are a lot of baby boomers that are um, retiring soon. Um, there's like, you know, we are hard up for med techs, bad. Um, and of course, coming out of school, um, people want the day shift jobs. That's everybody wants a day shift. Well, not everyone, but for the most part, unless you have a spouse that works overnights, most people wants, want a day shift job. So those are the ones in high demand. Um, so we're always really short on overnight shifts, just everywhere there's always overnight shift jobs available. Um, that works for some people. However, for me, I tried that for a little while and my body just wasn't having it. My bones hurt really bad. And I think it was my body's way of saying, hey, Mar, you were supposed to be asleep right now. What are you doing? Like, this is not cool. So, um, but yeah, the job outlook is really good for if you want to work overnights. Like, you can get a job pretty much anywhere. That's why there's so many traveling techs because they're, they're traveling to those locations that desperately need people and they just don't have enough bodies to work. So anyway, um, I want to talk about benefits. So, you know, working at a hospital, you do get good health insurance. Um, the place that I work for, it is they are um, insured by their own, they have their own health plan. Um, the insurance, the benefits aren't super great, um, but there are a lot of incentives. There is a, like a healthy living incentive where each year we have to go and get our biometric screenings. And, um, if our numbers are within certain ranges, like our, um, hemoglobin A1C, so our sugar level, um, our lipid panels, our triglycerides, our blood pressure, if all those are within, an, you know, under the certain normal range, then um, that we get that amount in money and that gets put on a flex card or it's called a HRA card. And with that, you can use that um, on doctor's appointments, on prescriptions. The only thing that we can't use it on is dental and vision because those are through separate insurances. So last year I got almost a thousand dollars. So I all year I really haven't had to pay for any of my my doctor visits or my prescriptions, uh, which have been really nice since my progesterone is about like $45 a month. So that could be pretty expensive. But like I said, um, through the healthy living thing and all my numbers were good except my blood pressure, but that's okay. It was just like one over. Um, but I still did, I still got enough money. You max out at like a thousand. 
Um, and also I got more money from like if you go get like your pap smear or you go get uh, your wellness kind of women wellness check um, and you'll get money through that if you listen to different, um, if you go to different little convention things they have, you can get money for your card on there, or also my Fitbit, I've got money for that, in which I wanted to make a video about how to make money from your Fitbit. There's a couple different places, not just your work, that you can make money from it, from putting your steps in. So, yeah, overall, pretty good benefits, not the actual health insurance, you know, you have your, like, like $2,500 deductible, which I never meet, so, you know, it's, you get what you pay for, I guess, but in this instance, I wish we got more, um, but for my insurance, I think I pay, it's, it's not bad, it's, I think, partially subsidized by the hospital, um, like 48 every two weeks or something like that. So I only pay about, what's that, 90 uh, a month for health insurance. Um, now there are some downsides of the job, like I said. Um, I've seen lists where they have, like being a med tech is one of the like less stressful jobs, that is false. Um, it depends, I guess, how much empathy you have for people. And, like, when I work, I'm always like, I got to get this done. Like, this this ER doc's waiting on this. And so I kind of stress myself out more than maybe a lot of other people do. Or maybe because I'm still, like, a newer tech. And I haven't been um, desensitized, I guess, to it. I still worry. And, like, I kind of put myself through stress trying to get things done in what I think is a timely manner. Um, when I go, you know, stick patients, they tell me their story and I like worry about them and I like, you know, talk to them and stuff like that. Or we have little children that come in through the ER and like what they're going through. And so there's a downside, um, especially working in a smaller hospital where you have more um, jobs, more parts to your job where when I worked at the main hospital we're kind of in the lab we had no contact outside contact with the patients um or even outpatients because the phlebotomy people drew their blood and we didn't have to but working at a smaller hospital I get a lot more patient interaction which is good because I know like I'm there's a reason that I have this job and to help other people but yet there's a downside that I am one that I absorb other people's like emotions and so that kind of sucks when you're maybe already stressed out with all the jobs you're trying to do and then you hear this story of this person coming in and they're feeling so bad and all these things are going wrong with them and especially with little children um it definitely really gets me and bothers me and I worry about them like you know I wonder how they're doing like like, like weeks down the road and, and especially also not even children but little babies we have that get born up on our OB floor and some the mothers are addicted to different drugs and then it, you know we test the babies and the babies can be positive for all these drugs and then you just you just you just have this pain for what they're going through so I mean that's with any almost any job in the healthcare field there are that there is that downside especially if you are an empathetic sympathetic person where you kind of absorb those feelings in it it's, you know a lot of times I just need to like recollect kind of I guess I need to do more meditation where I don't absorb everything I don't want to be desensitized and and just try to forget things but also there's only so much I can deal with with my own stuff and then trying to think of everyone else um and it just kind of overwhelms you at times and so you kind of need to recollect and say I'm doing the best I can to help this person and you know it's ultimately up to God or whoever you believe in what their fate is and I can only do my best to help aid the doctors in their diagnosis and helping them heal so yeah that's uh being a med tech and my story so um thanks for watching bye guys Thank <laughs> you.